I'm here. Happy Thursday, happy Friday, wherever you are. Some of us are in Thursday, some of us are in Friday. <laughs> Welcome to our Blue Canoe Clinic with teachers and learners. I'm Karen Taylor, here with Laura McIndoo. Uh, we're going to be uh, discussing the topic of long words today. Um, and I'm going to start off just with a song because I don't think we hear enough music, right? But also this is a song that celebrates one of the longest words that we know of um, that has been invented for the sake of being long. And so here it is, just a brief clip of a very long word that's famous in English speaking culture. Even though the sound of it is something quite atrocious, if you say it loudly, all right, that's enough. <laughs> so that's a pretty long word, right? We can even see that word over here. Uh, right there. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Huh? What are we going to do with these kinds of words? They're so long. <laughs> Luckily, that word doesn't mean anything. It's just an invented word for music. Yeah, it kind of means fantastic. <laughs> How do you feel about long words? That's what I would like to to start with as, as a question for you. If you can use the chat, uh, when you get to a long word, how do you feel? If you're a, you're a learner and a user today, mm. how do you feel? I have to say a long word. We're not sure. <laughs> Sometimes even I, I get worried I'm going to trip over the word. Too many syllables and I might get stuck. Anybody ever have that sensation? Yeah? Hard to pronounce? Okay. So my next question for you is, uh, what words do you get worried about? Are there, is there a particular word that you find particularly difficult? This is a great opportunity for us to work with your words today. So go ahead and type in words that you have struggled with or one word that always makes you think, oh, what am I going to do? <laughs> Robin, Robin. Go ahead and say that one for us while we're collecting other long words. The, yeah, the, the um, supercalifragilisticexpialidocious song was based on the actual longest word in Webster's third, which was pneumono ultramicroscopic silicovacaliconiosis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Matthew. <laughs> I like the applause. I so think, uh, they, they took that word and then they made a song out of it, except they changed the word. <laughs> All right, so we had a nice long word there. Um, exaggerate, nice word, consciousness. So my question as we start writing these is, when does a word become long. You know, a short word would be maybe a one syllable word, maybe uh, the word like uh, zoom, right? Single, one syllable, easy. Um, two syllables, is that still pretty short? Right, about? Um, what about computer, three syllables? Is that a short word or is that a long word? Long word. It's a pretty long word? It starts to feel a little bit yeah. long, yeah? computer maybe it's on the edge right about the third maybe the fourth syllable now the word starts to become long and what does long mean why does it matter right and so if we have a word like unimaginable um it can be really tricky to say and i saw matthew do this he said <laughs> he said what matthew did you hear that word Unimaginable. Oh, unimaginable. That's right. Okay. So I actually mispronounced it on purpose. I said unimaginable. Um, and that stress pattern, unimaginable, is not a word of English because I didn't use the right stress. So instead, it's unimaginable. Unimaginable. Try it one more time. Unimaginable. So what if I, what if I change to unimaginable 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 now it's becoming a strange word again not the word that we can actually understand yeah so there's one primary stress in one location and we know that it's unimaginable let's try that black cat unimaginable 
like that and imaginable. Very good. <laughs> Very good. And I'm going to actually, mm -hmm. I'm going to mute you for a minute, um, Fang, and so that we can hear. And so we have unimaginable, but there's a secondary stress there, right? So I'm going to use my hand in a small way. Unimaginable. 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 Wow. Yeah. Great. I could hear everybody all at once. <laughs> All right. So when we have words that are about three, definitely four syllables, we start to get secondary stress. Yeah. And we're going to need to know where the secondary stress is and, and where the primary is. Um, but primary is primary. So let's always stick with that. What color? Let's use some of your words now. Um, so we come back up to the top of the list. And Robin, I'll be inviting you to talk about long words in just a minute. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit, but let's look at a few of these. Exaggerate. I'm looking at Anil's words because she was the first one after consciousness. So here's exaggerate. What color is exaggerate, everybody? Black cat exaggerate. Nice. Black cat exaggerate. Remember, let's exaggerate by using our arm and extending it. You need the time there. Ready? Black cat exaggerate. <laughs> Black cat exaggerate. Excellent. <laughs> All right. It's a very <laughs> wonderful, lively group. <laughs> so we have a black cat word. Um, how about consciousness? What color is consciousness? Olive salt. Olive cup of mustard. Olive. Okay. So if it were cup of mustard, it would be exaggerate. Exaggerate. Uh, exaggerate. But with this, it's exaggerate, exaggerate. Okay? So the difference is a, quite a couple of things, but especially how open the mouth is. This is a, uh, a, uh, a, uh, a. Uh, okay. So let's do a little bit of yoga for a minute. Come up to the top. You could point to my green tea, and you can just follow me. Here we go. We're going to drop the jaw as we come down. E yeah. 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 Mm. And when you get to the bottom, <laughs> try it again. Yeah. yeah. You might let the place is different from your language, right? A little bit different. This ah sound is black. And now yeah. use that position one more time and we'll say exaggerate afterward. Ready? Yes, nice black sound. Okay, good. So we did a little bit of sort of vowel tuning by moving around in the chart. Okay, okay, so exaggerate one, two, three, four, exaggerate. Yeah, exaggerate, exaggerate. Now, why isn't it exaggerate? Exaggerate. But it's not, right? It's exaggerate. Mm. Dr. Barr. Dr. Barr, can you tell us what's happening in that final syllable? Why isn't it writ? Why is it exaggerate? Because it has secondary stress, and so it's not a schwa. Yes. So, there you go. Thank you. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. So here we are. Exaggerate. I'm going to use another word that's a little similar, and I'll use a better pen so you can read with me. Um, we'll come back to exaggerate, but look at this word. Exaggerate. Okay, so here's the Dad word graduate. Graduate. Okay, graduate. Graduate. We have two different graduate. possibilities here. You have graduate, which would be a schwa, graduate, and you also have graduate. A. Okay, graduate, graduate. Watch me and let's repeat. Graduate. 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 Good. So listen to the last syllable. What? 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 Graduate. 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 Good. Graduate. 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 Uh -huh. I'm hearing eight. So graduate would be the noun. A person is a graduate of their college. Now, if we change that from graduate to graduate, graduate is the verb, to graduate, to graduate mm. from school. So that's an example where the secondary stress really 
does make a, a difference here. We'll come back to exaggerate, but for a minute, let's spend more time with graduate. So here's yeah. graduate, graduate. Same spelling in both of them, okay? Here's graduate, graduate. They're both black, graduate. They're both black cat words, okay? Black, black. So what's different? Graduate, graduate. So the form is changing. Form is changing. Graduate. Good. So it's the difference between this sound right here, which we'll call schwa, and this one, which is a small gray syllable. I'll call that a small gray syllable. So the because it has a gray sound. Yeah, the second one is a noun for me. Yeah, yeah uh, to graduate is the verb. A verb, yeah. Okay. To graduate, mm -hmm. right? Graduate. And the graduate, that can be a noun or that can be an adjective, like graduate school. Graduate. Okay. I apologize, my handwriting is not great tonight. <laughs> Sometimes it's better, but that's okay. So for a moment, take graduate and say graduate. Graduate. So I will graduate next year. Graduate. Graduate. Yeah. I'm using this little closed fist as a kind of secondary stress. And we can use it many times to um, find that color. So try this one. University. 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 Good. University. Good. University. Good. University. Primary stress is verse. What color? Color, 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 color. Oh. Ooh. You have all kinds of things. I'm going to turn off some people here. Let's see. Can you mute yourselves? That'll help us a lot. There we go. Oh, that's yeah. better. Good. University. University. And that is what color? Purple shirt university. Purple shirt university. So we can acknowledge secondary stress, but we'll go out on the primary stress for time and color. But question. How yes. do you mark that on, on the board? How do you mark a secondary stress? Because you're underlying the primary stress. What are you doing to the secondary stress? Thank you. So there's some, some nice, elegant ideas out there. Um, one way is to show we have um, lines and we can have a small line underneath and you have dots as well. So we can do something like this. If we have university, let's see. I don't usually mark it. So I'm looking for ideas too, yeah? But I can say university, there's my purple. Everybody see? Purple. And then if we need to talk about this one, I might do a dot because I don't use lines and dots a lot otherwise. And if you're a teacher, you know that we sometimes use lines and dots for just unstress and stress. But in this case now, I can, I can put it there and call that a small blue syllable. University, university. Teachers, do you have other ways that you mark up stress in the primary and the secondary that work for you, that you recommend? How do you do it? <laughs> Not the same. I don't mark up much, but yeah, I, I would, dot looks good to me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I try to keep it very simple, right? So I don't spend a lot of time everywhere else marking every syllable. So I do have room for using a dot there. Just anything to convey that it's important, uh, more important than the unstressed syllables, but not as important as the primary stress. Now, um, finding the primary stress can be tricky because sometimes it moves. <laughs> so in a word like graduate and graduate, it stays in the same place, right? Gra, black cat. But what about a word, what would be a nice word that might um, flip over? Tennessee. Yeah, so let's take a word like this. Not a word that everybody needs, but we'll find some other examples. Here's a state of Tennessee. Where's the stress? Uh, Tennessee. Tennessee. On the last, last one. Last one. Last syllable, Tennessee. so we'll call that a green word. Green tea, yes. yeah. Okay, yes. so let's try it. Green tea, Tennessee. You can read Tennessee. Great. You could do that now, with 17 also. 17 might be a more useful word. <laughs> okay, good. Sorry. So there's Tennessee. Let's try 17, and it will behave similarly 
and we'll be able to see what happens. 17. Okay, so here we have 17, green T17. Yeah, so there's that green syllable. Now, what happens if we talk about um, um, people? Just let's give it a, a, a noun down here. Um, 17 people or 17 people? 17 people. Yeah, 17 people. So really? suddenly this stress jumps over here. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. 17 this, people. Uh, that one but if I say that my, my, my friend's daughter is 17, meaning years old, she's 17. How old is she? 17. 17. Uh -huh. uh, but how many people? 17 people. Yeah. 17 no. people. 17 people. Yeah. Why does that happen, Dr. Barr? Any thoughts there? Ah, it's a special uh, thing that English does called iambic reversal, which <laughs> means that English hates to have two main stresses next to each other. So it's because people is stressed mm -hmm. on the first syllable. That means that you can't say 17 people because yeah. <laughs> that's two uh, stresses are too close together. Exactly. Uh, you see what happened? I didn't have time to, to move my hand back. Uh, so you have to so we have kind of a buffer. People. Yeah, we create a buffer or a protected area and we move this way. Um, and it often moves not just one syllable, but two backward. So you'll see mm -hmm. this kind of behavior. So it, don't. It, it moves to the secondary stress, is what happens. Mm -hmm. Okay, there we go. That, that's why you need to know where the secondary stress is. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. So here was 17 where it was the dot before. And then when they switched, this became the dot and this became the line. 17 people. Okay. So with these three syllable words, only three, you already have secondary stress happening. Um, with the longer words, you can start to find some predictions, right? Because what are longer words? They often have a suffix or a prefix, but especially those suffixes, some of those make it pretty easy to guess where the stress is going to happen. Um, but it, make it, it can be kind of surprising in the meantime. So if we take a word like able, able, are you able to stay around a little longer? Able, can we just find the stress there? Able, able. What if we add a suffix to make this into a noun? Right now it's an adjective, able. Ability, ability. Okay, so it was able, and now it's ability. ability. Is it ability? Ability. It was able. Here's ability. able. Able. But with this suffix, what happens? Listen ability. to it. Ability. 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 So ability. suddenly, yeah. the stress has moved to the next, to this syllable, and not because it moved forward, but because this suffix is so sticky, it makes the, the stress fall uh, just to before it, ability. Can you think of some other words that end with itty, I-T-Y? What other Stabi words are I-T-Y? Stable. stable. Uh, and stability. Good, so here's stable, stable. And stability. Stability. Yeah. Okay, good, so stable. But now with itty, we're going to go right here. Itty, illity, stability. Try that silver, pin stability. Silver, pin stability. Stability, great. Um, and is there, an, is there a secondary stress on this? On this word? Stability. Maybe, maybe the yeah. T. Yeah, stability. maybe we can think of that. This yeah. ending sound, is it stability? Stability? No, stability, mm -hmm. stability. Perfect. So this sound right here, you, you can also mark as having, you know, a small color if it's helpful, if it's needed. Uh, but here we have, mostly it's a silver word mm -hmm. and it has a small green ending, okay? And that can come up handy again with graduate, graduate. There's your secondary stress, graduate. And then, and then graduation. Get graduation, exactly. Let's look at a few other words that you brought to the table. Um, how about Dilnoza? You mentioned transferable. Transferable, which one? Yes, I did. 
which which what, what's your thought about that word yeah um, transferable transfer transfer transferability like it's kind of kind of hard transition you know transfer transferring transferability <laughs> Yeah, transferable, transferable. I think that would be one that some native speakers might feel is transferable. There right? Transferable. Transferable. Mm -hmm. transferable. 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 Could go either way. Um, sometimes you'll find multiple possible. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Others? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, what do you have there? What do we have in the dictionary, Laura? It says purple shirt transferable in the Blue Canoe Dictionary. Yeah. Yeah. How many of you are using the Blue Canoe Dictionary to answer these kinds of questions? Remember, if we find that primary stress, you are 80% to being comprehensible. It really helps. Okay. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Other words we have going on here. Um, I'm seeing a lot of my teachers give words. I want to see some from the learners. Here we go. <laughs> um, amity. Oh, interesting. I haven't seen that word in a long time. Amity. Amity. Um, you know, what color is Amity? Amity. What is Amity? Amityville Horror is the only thing I know. It's part of a movie title. <laughs> Amity. Someone it will is. have to look it up. It right? is friendship. It, Amity. Like I mean, right? friendship. Yeah, friendship. friendship. I think so. Huh? <laughs> friendship, right? Yep. Good. So that's a black cat word. Um, Kent, you mentioned suitable and suitability. Yeah, that's another great example. Capacity. Great. Well, let's look at a couple, like maybe one other set of those suffixes. Um, another common example of a suffix that changes around. Shun. Um, yeah, shun. What do you know about shun and what can you say about it? Shun. Let's list some words with shun. Ready? Here we go. Actually, do it in the chat so we can see them. As many shun words as you can think of. I'll have graduation. Action. <laughs> Action. We're making a nice flooding list here, by the way. When you're playing Blue Canoe, if you're ever, ever using, um, let me think about it, in the lessons, we often give you a list of words that are all the same color. And uh, if you mm -hmm. say all of those words, this is what we're doing here. We're flooding. So let's take a look at these starting up at transportation tradition. Oh, we have a whole bunch of these. Okay, I'm going to read these out loud and you can listen for a minute and hear where is this, where's the stress and what's the pattern. Ready? Gamification. Uh, hold on. Ramification, competition, graduation, transformation, tradition, transportation, action, education, elaboration, preservation, syllabification, combination. Is there a pattern? Can you hear it? Did your musical brain kind of say, woo, I can hear that. Where's the stress? The stress is always on the syllable before the, su the suffix. suffix. Before yeah. the shim. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. always on the syllable before that suffix. suffix. Yeah. It's a beautiful rule that you can actually pretty much count on. Uh, do we know of any exa any ex uh, exceptions to that? I can't think of any. So that's a pretty good one. Um, what else do we have? How about words that end in shus, like delicious? Delicious. Mm -hmm. Delicious. What other words are like delicious? Can you type some in? Delicious. Suspicious. Suspicious. There you go. <laughs> conscious. Precious. Precious. What is the word? Precious. Precious. Yeah. Red pepper precious. That's right. Yeah. So yeah. what happens with shus words? C-I-O-U-S. Same thing, right? Yes. So we can count on these. Wonderful. Um, mm -hmm. uh, now notice um, Mathieu had courteous, which doesn't do, which doesn't follow the rule. Why not? Is the e -us. Yeah, so the word, what's that word, Robin? Courteous. courteous. So it's not courteous, it's courteous. Courteous. So it didn't follow the rule. Good, uh, good uh, example, Mathieu. Aha, right, okay, because it wasn't, it's not shus, it's just the I-O-U-S at the end. 
So there we go. Um, so C I O U S would be different than just I O U S, right? Actually, it's um, E O U S. E O U S. Okay. E O U S. E S. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Good. So we have some other variations there. Good. Um, and so as we start thinking about long words, what are some strategies, teachers, that you can recommend for learners in the room? What do you do with those long words? And what do you find is the difficulty that people have? Just dividing it up into two. syllables for the first. Say that again. Dividing it up into syllables for the yeah. first. I mean, I make them count the vowels first because there's too many vowels to, to notice how many syllables, you know, to be able to count the syllables. Yeah, so we I mean, count it's the too long, It's too long to count, yeah. Mm -hmm. And once we do that and start to find those stresses, the primary stress and secondary, we can slow down. Uh, I think the difficulty, if you don't know where the stress is, it sounds too fast. And that's what the English listeners will have difficulty understanding you if you don't use enough stress. Sometimes mm -hmm. I ask students um, to make a table to make sure that they know the noun, adjective, and the verb, and then they can just stress and understand the difference because not all words are the same pronouns. So that helps a lot. Great. Can you give an example of that? That's a great idea. That's, that's well put. <laughs> liable, liability, uh, to be liable, I guess. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. So finding every time you study a word, you can look at actually the, the dictionary in Blue Canoe is great for this. You can look mm -hmm. up the related forms of that word. So my two of my favorites are, you know, molecule, molecular, right? It moves with the change of the, the type of word that it is from molecular, <laughs> molecular to molecule. Um, what happens to south? Does that change stress <laughs> when it becomes a noun? Oh yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah I mean, it becomes an adjective. We have south, southern. southern. Yeah. So southern. it's not a change in stress. It's a great what? vowel shift. <laughs> so it's a change in color from brown cow mm -hmm. south to what? Southern. Mustard southern? Yeah, mustard, southern. Southern. Okay. Molecule. What color is uh, molecular? Rose boat molecular. Careful. That would be the beginning sound, mo, but m, m, molecular, molecular. Red, red pepper, red pepper red molecular. Red pepper. Right? Uh -huh. Yeah. Molecular. Good. How about equal, changing to equality? What color is equal? Green. Green, C, equal. Right? Equal, good. And now what happens when it becomes a noun? Equality. Quality. Uh, olive top. Uh, nice. Top. Well done, yep. Anil. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Ah, ah. Good. Mm -hmm. Well done. Oh. Good. We have some nice ones down here. Rely, reliable, reliability. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, Liz is in the room. Equilibrium. There's a nice long word. Equilibrium. <laughs> Equilibrium. Can everybody show me where the stress is and show me the secondary stress? Equilibrium. Where's the primary stress? Equilibrium, right? Equilibrium. Now, where's the secondary stress? Second part. Equilibrium. Okay. All right. So let's let's pay some. Let's take a look at that word for a minute. Equilibrium. Equilibrium. Cool. <laughs> Let's hope you don't want to have two live. stresses close together if you yeah. so usually you want to alternate stresses in English. That's right. It's very Unless rare it's that you would have two in a row. So we have equilibrium, right? Here's my silver. Okay. So we're probably not going to have our primary stress here. That's unlikely. We mm -hmm. like to keep them separated with unstressed syllables. Mm -hmm. So we have, uh, is it uh or e? Equilibrium. I think that two. Uh, the first one? Uh-huh. Mm. Yeah. Equilibrium, 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 equilibrium. So the ba 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 okay? So that's a, a good example of a really nice uh, primary stress and then a, a, a primary stress and a secondary stress, okay? 
Mm -hmm. Nice. Good. Entrepreneur, nice French word, a loan word into English. Thank you, Matthew. Can you say that one for us in French? Ah, in French. Uh, en... <clears throat> Entrepreneur. And can you say it just uh, a little more quickly? <laughs> Entrepreneur. Okay. So that to me, in my English ears, I hear pa 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 pa. <laughs> right? I hear pa 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 pa. Yeah? <laughs> and we all have these impressions of another language, but the, the French is da 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 da. Or da da da. You know, I hear, I hear the stress on the last syllable. Is that accurate? Yeah, yeah. Well, in English, it's, it's one of the, it's one of the most, uh, one of the strangest words I've ever heard in English. Because that last syllable is like kind of a wooden hook with R control, like, or entrepreneur. <laughs> and it's so like, a, it's, a, it's really a standalone word. Uh, English speakers or in native English speakers, because we're all English speakers today, um, but native English speakers, what color is entrepreneur for you? For me, it is wooden hook, just like Mathieu said. Uh -huh. but I think I've heard purple and blue also. Yeah, Laura, you say it's purple. Can you model that for us? Purple shirt entrepreneur. Okay, so purple shirt entrepreneur. I, have, other... I have wooden hook entrepreneur. Uh-huh. Any other pronunciations? Notice if you're thinking, well, how is that possible? Why are two teachers saying different things? Um, notice how blue, moon. blue moon, in, maybe blue huh? moon, maybe blue moon. Yeah, also blue moon, entrepreneur, yeah. entrepreneur. And of course, to Matthew, he's just thinking, oh, that's so different from you know the, the original French. But we borrowed it and we never gave it back. <laughs> 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 and we don't have that vowel, the French vowel in English, so we have to make a, something approximating it. Yeah. So once <laughs> once a language borrows a word, and this this happens, you know, across many different languages. The same goes from English to Japanese. I think now you could list many words that you've borrowed from English back into <laughs> Japanese, and we're never getting that word back. <laughs> <laughs> like McDonald's. I mean, just the way it's said is so different from the way we say McDonald's as one example. Yeah, totally okay. different. Yeah. different yeah. yeah. Or, can you say it for us? Just because okay. we're curious. McDonald's. There. Okay. <laughs> da, 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 da. Okay. Da, 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 da. So, <laughs> so it's borrowed and it's changed by the second language. And in this case, we borrowed French and we did something different to it. Entrepreneur, entrepreneur, entrepreneur. And all of these, even entrepreneur, uh, something in there, somewhere up in here, as long as it has a, an R in it and it has some kind of color in this area, we'll accept it. Uh, hmm. mm, yep, I got it. Good. Any other words as we wrap up for the day? This has been fun. I have a really weird word, uh, like super long, super califragilistic expialidocious. So that's the word we started oh, with. That's our song. Where's the stress? Aha. Yes. Ocious. Yeah. Ocious. So super califragilistic espialidocious. Okay. It's a very nice yeah. way to, uh, to finish the session by saying, if you have a very long word, there's a pretty good chance that the primary stress is, is just before the suffix. Okay, so mm -hmm. look for those options. Pneumona mm -hmm. ultra microscopic silico volcanic coniosis. There you go. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. So uh, well, the tip is to work back from the end. If if it's a long word, it's likely to be borrowed from a Latin or Romance language, and then it'll follow the Latin stress rule, which accounts from the end. If it's an English mm -hmm. word, it'll it'll you have to start from the beginning. Yeah. That's what uh, I, I used to teach in my classes too, is it gives students like a, a, a pattern, uh, a ground, and they could say, oh, wow, great. And so they're not half as like, oh my God, what do I do with this really long word? Where is the stressed syllable? And the secondary syllable, whatever, but at least I gave them a, a ground uh, to stand on somewhere. So patterns. What was, the, what was the ground that you gave them to stand on? 
skip? The, 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 last, the last syllable before the last is the penultimate syllable. There's another one, penultimate uh, syllable. <laughs> It should be penultimate, right? That's breaking the rule. So when in doubt, move to the end of the word and come back. Skip yeah. behind the suffix coming on the front end of it and you'll be in the right place. I don't, I don't know if this is true, true too, but I, that's why I wrote gamification. Because a lot of new words that come into English, we know exactly where the stress is with gamification. So it became a new word very easily and quickly. You're like, okay, I know how to say that yeah. word. <laughs> yeah, yeah, wonderful. What's well, interesting is that it's gamification and not gamification, which it should be like ramification. Yes. So, <laughs> uh, interesting uh, coinage. There's uh, <clears throat> one thing, I mean, we've been talking about long words and how to stress them. Uh, actually, I'm as if if not more likely to trip on short words than long words. For example, I'm, I'm likely to say things like, uh, uh, I've bought a record, or uh, I'd like to record this uh, session, mm -hmm. Be or been and been. Uh, so I have to watch out for those mistakes because the long words there, they're sometimes very peculiar. Uh, since they're peculiar, I've, I've, I remember the, the stress uh, right from the beginning, but some short words are, you know. Yes. yes. The example that you gave is actually very tricky. Record, 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 and record. Yeah. Right. And remembering which, which one is graduate. Is that the adjective yeah. or is that the noun? Right. So it's that kind of question. Um, the more you can put words in a useful phrase, I find uh, the easier it is to integrate it or to kind of uh, acquire it. So if you're not sure which one is the record and which one is the record, uh, don't leave them alone, right? I love to play records. Yeah. I have I, a I would recording like to, of your voice. Uh, yeah, I'd like to also just say I, I teach middle schoolers here and, and they hear a lot of English. So I put it into phrases and uh, they, I don't know, it seems to help. <laughs> I don't know the research done on this, but it seems to really help because they will hear it outside of class as well. Yeah. So putting a Thanks. word into a phrase. Yeah. 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 Very important. Don't get stuck on a word by itself, right? Good. Any final advice as we close things down for this particular meeting? So much fun. I just want to stay here, but you know, this is, awesome. has this to. is wonderful. Yeah, it's great to see everybody. What would you like to see, since I have so many of our users and learners in the room today, um, if you have a topic that you would like us to explore or a kind of question you'd like us to answer, um, this kind of meeting is wonderful. You have all of these teachers in the room and we're here to support you with lots of different perspectives. Uh, I, Robin? I, I, would I would like to see activities that teachers can do with their students. Uh, you, you already did one where you looked at um, the whole sentences and how to practice the whole sentences using the, um, some of the lists in Blue Canoe. I'm, I'm just looking for more things that can be done not solo. So how, okay. how can we exploit Blue Canoe in a, a Zoom teaching environment? Okay, so Blue Canoe and Zoom. I like all those blue words. Right? Blue canoe, blue canoe and, and zoom. zoom. What can you do with blue canoe yes. and zoom? That's the title of one of our upcoming sessions, Penny, right? It's cool. <laughs> it's cool, exactly. Stay cool. cool. All right. And um and what else? Learners, users, we'd love to hear from you too. How about compound nouns or phrasal verbs? Huh? <laughs> oh, look at those. Are those, are those yeses? You can click a yes or you can nod. Yeah, well, those would be kind of fun to talk about. I would okay. love to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the difference between a white house and the white house or the difference between uh, a, a ladybug and a ladybug? Um, these are subtle, <laughs> there is no difference there, but maybe compounds and phrasal verbs. Great, good. Um, I see collocations, good. Okay, other topics, things that are confusing to you, things that you would like help with. 
Um, I know, you know, I know at least one of our teachers has been working on um, teaching with songs and teaching in that way musically. Would we like to have a, a one evening with some songs? See what we can get out of those. Okay. Is that a yes? I see some clap. Yeah, that would be interesting. Okay, good. So I, I think I know who to talk to. I'm looking at her right now. Wonderful. Well, we have some topics gathered and uh, <laughs> Liz is the one who's just giving the signal there. She's been working on, on workshops with songs, right? What's so great about songs, Liz? Well, not just songs, but song lyrics. You know, there's there's the pattern of the intonation and the pronunciation and all that, but also just the culture and why people are talking about what they're talking about and songs and yeah. there's a lot. There is a lot. I think I think we have a, a good idea there. They okay. stick in your head. So I have a, a pronunciation teacher's head. song book that I've been collecting songs for years in my from my pronunciation class and it's great fun to list them all like this land is your land is a favorite. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Uh, we have a lot of uh, we had a lot of people come today. I hope you found something useful today. We will come back with these topics, and next time you come, I think uh, you know song lyrics are a great idea, maybe with phrasal verbs in them. How about that? A two for one. Okay. Thank you so much. Good. Have a great evening or a great day, depending on where you are. And join us next time. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye, Bye. 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 Bye.